All right, so use of the Easy One spirometer, you make sure that you're taking care of this when I borrowed it from a local local hospital. You notice it's got their tracking device on there, so make sure that we're taking care of it. You will have a spirette that's gonna go inside of that, so these spirettes really only fit one direction. You'll notice there's a triangle here. There's also a triangle in that spirette. You wanna make sure that you get that seated down and opened up. I would open it in such a manner so that you keep the mouthpiece covered, it's protected, but it's also not picking up additional flow because just that movement to your patient with flow going through your flow tube or through your spirette can cause this uh, test to go ahead and get started. Now, there are a few different versions of the easy one. This is an older version. Uh, we've got a newer version that's more touch screen, but it didn't have enough mouthpieces to, to go with that one. We've got enough mouthpieces to satisfy this one. So the first order of business is gonna to be to turn the machine on. So press and uh, hit the on button, it'll come in, kind of go through a self test or what have you and then it's ready to go. So it'll say perform test, review results, uh, print results, configuration, or edit your database. We're gonna perform a new test, so just go ahead and hit enter here. Uh, when you do this, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna do a new test, recall a test, or uh, have some, we're just gonna do a new test. So again, enter. And then you can go through and put in some ID information for per grins and giggles. I'll do one, two, three, and four, and I'll hit enter. And then name, uh, old school text, text kind of stuff rather than a touch. So uh, my name is Daniel. So three for D, two or one for A, then two on six for N. Then I've got to do three times for I, two for E on number three, and then three times on number five for L. My height is 30, or age rather, is 36. Height is 5'10". Uh, whoops, I missed. Wait, I can go back in and put that in. Put that in. I am Caucasian. Uh, I am male. I'm not a smoker. No asthma. And I accidentally missed my weight. I would have put the weight in ahead of there, and it did not allow me the option to go to go back. So now it says block your spirette and, and uh, blast out. So you'd wanna tell your patient that they're gonna take in a deep breath as, as much as they can, and then they're gonna uh, place their lips around this mouthpiece, and with their lips around the mouthpiece, they're gonna exhale just through their, uh, through their mouth. Uh, that way you can, you know, uh, get their forced vital capacity, their uh, FEV1, FVC ratio, and some of the other bedside measurements that you can get. So with that on there, it says that block spread until prompted to blast out. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter for next. As getting a baseline flow, it's gonna ask me to blast out. I'm gonna remove this cellophane wrapper. I'll take in a deep breath as much as I can. I'm gonna try to turn this around without triggering any flow. Take in a deep breath as much as I can, and then I'm gonna blast out for as hard as long as I can, and you're gonna want that to go for at least six seconds. So here we go. Big breath in. And that'll tell you if they had a good effort or not. That was a good effort. And typically you're gonna do that three times, get a three, and then you can take the average of those risks. So uh, I'm ready to go next. It'll have you repeat again. Another deep breath in. And that was two really good efforts, so it tells me the session's complete. Typically, it takes around three, but if you've got someone that follows directions and knows what they're doing pretty well, do three, and then you can view your results. You can print your data, look at your data. I'm going to look at the data, and then this will be some of the things that you want to make sure that you're looking at. So you can do your FVC. Mine happens to be 5.5, which is 103% of predicted. Uh, FEV1 is 4.4, which is 103% of predicted. Uh, my FEV1 percent... Uh, 80, 99% are predicted. And then the peak expiratory flow uh, was also 101% predicted. So fortunately, you know, things things worked out pretty well. And then ultimately just coaching someone through this. So 
I did a lot of stuff, but you would say, keep blowing, 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 can encourage them to keep going. And then also make sure you give them plenty of rest time in between for that. But that's how you utilize the easy one sprung.